Here's the thing about astronauts. I got to figure that every astronaut is some version of a type A personality and that this was much more extent back in the 60s. And I just picture four to six of those dudes in a single trailer like this. That's got to be intense. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Buzz snores. I can't sleep because Buzz snores. We have to deal with this. It must be addressed. <laughs> Hey everybody, Space Nerd Adam Savage. I'm standing below the flight deck of the USS Hornet with Anthony. How are you, sir? I'm okay. Um, tell me about what we're standing in front of and why. So <laughs> this is a very special artifact for us because as the recovery ship for Apollo 11 or 12, it is very important to us to have a command module, a capsule. And it's not the exact one because Smithsonian has it, sure. which makes yeah. sense, yes. right? Yeah. But this was a test one and we actually picked this one up too. So it's got that Hornet connection as well. Okay, so like, let's just go back and be really clear about this. This ship is the ship that was out in the Pacific receiving the three astronauts from both Apollo 11 and Apollo 12 missions. Yes, this was the recovery ship. This is literally where they came. Okay, yes. and this is a test a test capsule that you guys also, that, sorry, you guys, I know that you weren't on the ship. <laughs> I, you, I feel like you have a connection <laughs> yeah, to it. Yeah, it feels. But, <laughs> So, but the but the, uh, the Hornet actually picked up this one from a from a test exercise. Yes, from yes. the water. And I'll show you something really interesting around the around the back of it. <laughs> all right, all right. Can we take a look inside? Yeah. Um, when did when did the Hornet receive this? This was a uh, in as a loan in two thousand nine, I believe. I don't okay. double check the record, but um, this is a long term loan. Ideally, it's not going back. Right, we right, are right. The, sure, we are the sure, caretakers, sure. but we take it very seriously. And as you can see, there's um, three seats. Yeah, they're very a, cramped. I, every time I look at the three seats of an Apollo capsule, I am like, every one of the Apollo astronauts was a master at interpersonal connection, as far as I'm concerned. Because to spend days or even weeks in a tiny space like this, you must be driven nuts by the smallest thing. Workplace culture, very important. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy that is a nice way culture. to put it. Um, I can see that it's just got a fascia for instrumentation. As a test module, was this for a drop test or something like yes, that? Yes, that's what we're going to go around the oh, corner to yeah, look well, at. Oh, take me, yeah, take me, show yes, me around. Yes. Yeah. So then this was used as a practice unit for the actual uh, retrieval. Yes, and look at, what do you see here? <laughs> Whoa, okay. We didn't do this. <laughs> this was done by the actual experimentation process. Yes, this was a drop test and this huge dent and they said, we're not gonna do it on land. It right. was drop tested on land and they decided we're gonna do it in water because they tested it. And they thought that water would be gentler, but water is not gentle when you hit it at speed. <laughs> So this is damage done to this yes. Apollo test capsule by water. Yes, or no, by land. By on land, land. Oh. yes. And so on the uh, loan requirements, we are not allowed to alter this because oh. it's historic fabric. It is in a, it's a, it's in a historic damage. Exactly. Oh, I love that. And you can see the honeycomb of the ablative shield uh, rusting up through. We monitor it, make yeah. sure, you know, we, we give updates to the Smithsonian, oh, hey, great. you know, this it's in this condition. We do annual reports and every two years. So that's really curious to me. I didn't realize that, of course you do annual reports. So do you, when you're working with a piece like this, do you have a specific set of shots you're always looking at? Like, I'm really curious about this area and want to see how it changes over time? So yes, but they also have requirements that we have to do, we have to take photos of every angle, interior, exterior, because it's their artifact ultimately. And right, we right. have to make sure we're doing our end to take care of it gotcha. to the best of our ability. Do you have some, do you have a favorite part of this, uh, of this capsule? I mean, the easiest thing is to say the dent because yeah. to me, it really encapsulates, it's for lack of a better term, sorry. The, kind no, of that. <laughs> uh, sorry. I see what you did there. <laughs> Nicely done. That kind of like iterative process about the whole space race, right? right? They no, had to I, start small and work the way to get to the moon. Like to me, that's perfect. My favorite thing about NASA is that I realized at one point it is simply a ritual uh, failure analysis organization. That's exactly. all they're interested exactly. in. And here is some failure analysis. Right? And then you somehow get to the moon and back. Yeah, somehow you bring, yeah, using just Newtonian physics. Yeah, 
totally amazing. I, I want to go back and look inside. Again. Yes. Um, when the public interacts with this, what tends to be their their takeaway, their favorite part of the exhibit of the capsule? I think when I see the public, kids, school groups, it's yeah. really getting to peer, getting to see inside. And see how small this, that is. I see this all the time where they're just leaning in. Yeah. They want to get closer and they want to see. Um, and allowing them to have that experience because they're going to take this home, talk to their friends, talk right. to their parents, talk to everybody, and it's going to hopefully bring more people here. Well, the moment you stand here and look at these seats and think about being subjected to being next to a person for that length of time, it deeply personalizes the idea of space travel. Okay, so this is also roughly where the Apollo capsule came or when the astronauts arrived, when they arrived on the ship, is that right? This this lo the location where this capsule is is where the astronauts yes, showed up. Yes, they picked it up and put it onto Elevator Three yep. over there with the crane that we still use okay. for things. <laughs> a lot of working collections, and then brought it in, and we kind of staged this area like it would have been during the recovery. Amazing. Mission. So then they pulled they, they 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 the astronauts come out. Now they're wearing some special gear, which we'll cover in a minute. But they walk on these footsteps, yes? That's why we have them here, exactly. So, you can uh, follow in those Michael footsteps. Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Buzz Aldrin, they walked these footsteps. Exactly. So I'm walking in their footsteps. So what we're walking towards is something I've long known you guys have, but I had no idea we were going to be able to go inside. This is the quarantine vehicle. This is the mobile quarantine facility. It's a modified Airstream. Dude, this is my favorite. I, I'm... I love aircraft, but this is one of my favorite pieces of the entire space program. It's first of all, the Airstream is such an iconic American brand, such an amazing shape. It is the space race. But then th this is the actual Apollo mission. This is the one from Apollo 14. Okay. And we uh, have it. It's ours. Amazing. And so we take a lot of care with it. And we don't open it very often because there's some restoration work that needs to be done. Sure. But on certain occasions, like our Apollo Splashdown event in July, I open it for the public to be able to see Amazing. part of it. And kids and families just love it. It's, it's a highlight of that day. Really? And we're going to experience Let's it. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> do it. Take me in. Uh, first off, I wanted to cover this thing. These, I, I had not seen one of these in person. Tell me what this is. So this is called a big suit. It's a biological isolation garment. Big, so B-I-G, I see what they did. NASA was very concerned with space germs. They, they didn't, didn't know, they it never know. happened before. They had no idea. No right, idea. Right, right. So this was to prevent any spread of anything coming back from the moon. So the uh, astronauts had to don this in there before they, getting out? They were in the water, in their capsule, and they threw these big suits into the capsule and they had to change from the space suit into the big suit. I would, I have to say, if I had just gone to space and I come back and I've got to change into one of these in a wet capsule in the middle of the Pacific, I'd be pretty pissed off. <laughs> I heard they're not very comfortable either. <laughs> <laughs> but so when they make the walk from the capsule to the to the isolation, they're wearing these. They guys. are wearing those, yes, oh, yes. Man. I have, I've always wanted to see one of these up close. I had never. I think you're gonna get a, it, to me, the hardest part of this display was mounting it properly. The whole thing is an artifact on loan, right. and so we have to take really good care of it. Well, the zipper is broken. Oh. How, do we, how, do we, how do we mount it? How do we put it? Right, right. So one of our volunteers who helped us out said, well, we were workshopping, well, how do we, do we use magnets? Do we, we yeah. can't damage, we can't yeah, attach yeah. things. I said, well, why don't you just attach hooks to, the mannequin, the mannequin doesn't care if we, and then no. that's what you see, which oh. is grabbing gently the, the garment. Amazing. And that's how we displayed it. Um, I have mounted many, many suits on stands. It is not easy to do. It's not easy to get a physical gesture out of it. Done really well with this. One thing. more thing, yeah. look behind. Oh, right. Oh, so the stand is coming up through a tear in the suit, which I'm guessing is original. Yeah, not us. <laughs> yeah. So we, that was another issue. Well, there's this tear and it's a full body. We can't use yeah. a normal mannequin. No. Well, we have oh, these. Oh, right, because it's sealed all exactly, the way to the bottom. Exactly, exactly. Um, you need a little sign there saying we didn't do that. <laughs> That's, you've got to let people know. You can put that there. <laughs> oh, man. So we can go in? Whoa. Please.
Oh. It smells it smells like kind of old and musty in a perfect Different way. Different than the ship smell, right? Oh, you weren't lying about there's a microwave in there's here. There's a microwave. They had to live in here. Oh my God, these poor guys. How long did they have to stay in here? Two weeks? Two weeks, up to 28 days. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh, I'm so, I love this. This is beautiful. And then they slept in here. And they slept in here. <laughs> Like they've already gone to space. They're like so happy to be home. And like, sorry, you gotta spend two more weeks with these guys, dude. Anthony, thank you so much. Uh, this is just like a bucket list item for me to see this thing up close and inside. So we'll see you back, right? <laughs> oh, I, would I would totally sequester for two weeks in here. If you guys ever want that to happen, I will clear my schedule. That would be really fun. I'd be on on display. Man, hold on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, can't put a hat on the bed. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, who got the bottom bug? Thank you guys so much for watching that video. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you we have some excellent merch. We have a five pack of demerit badges for sale right now at tested slash store.com. We've got the I hung it off of level demerit badge, the I built the chair backwards demerit badge, the I hit my thumb with a hammer demerit badge. We've got the stapler in my finger demerit badge and my favorite, I stuck the duct tape to itself demerit badge. Get yours now, tested slash store dot store dash store, tested dash store, Tested. It's right here there. Just click that. <laughs>